so if you're not familiar with how to install Minidap on desktop, you can look at our YouTube channel or the link I put in the chat. Um, if you're not familiar with how to install Minidap on mobile, then that will be available once this video is uploaded to YouTube. And I'm just going to do one now. So can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, great. So this is Docker desktop. I'm running it on Windows. I've got a couple of test nodes I've spun up here. Um, I'm also running my own little archive node, which means that if one of my Docker nodes for some reason um, gets lost or whatever, um, I can resync myself. So I'm going to be using this Minima 8001 node. And if I click on it, I can see the logs here. If I go to terminal, then I can get the minima terminal up. So this is actually the same as the mini dap, the terminal mini dap. So you just need to do minima, enter, and then it will start the minima um, terminal. And for example, I can do balance, that shows my balance. Um, I can do get address. That shows me one of my default 64 addresses. So I'm going to open up the Minidap system. So it's HTTPS 127.0.0.1, and then I'm on 8.0.0.3. So you'll see your connection is not private. This is because Minimi is a self signed certificate. So everyone has their own individual um, self-signed certificate. So you just click advanced, proceed, login to your Minidap system. So this is the password that you used when starting the Docker node. So for example, this is what I used. If we just take a look at this last one here, my password is there, one, two, three. So. Log on successful, main menu. Okay, so now we see the Minidap hub. And I actually installed the IP rewards earlier. So let me just delete this and then I will show you how to do that again. If you scroll down to the bottom, you've got install a Minidap. You can just choose file and then select one from anywhere that you've downloaded before. So then you click install and to find our mini daps, you can just go to mini daps dot minima dot global. So on the Android, you saw you've got the dap store directly in the app. If you're running it on desktop or on a server, you can come to our mini daps website and download them from here. So now I see that's installed again. So before I go through that, I'll explain how to see your seed phrase and backup, etc. So you can either log on to the MinDAP pub here and open the terminal. The terminal and all MinDAPs actually are read apps, which means that they can't execute any terminal commands that might bend your balance, for example. So that's what these read write buttons do here. At the moment, all apps and by default are read. If I set it to write, then it means I don't have to approve commands. So I'll show you what that means now. So if I do vault, it's going to pop up saying this command needs to be confirmed and is now pending. So if I want to accept that pending command, I return to the hub here and I click on pending actions. And then I'll see the vault command is waiting to be accepted. And the reason that this is pending is because terminal is a read application. So I can accept that. And then the command will run and that will show me my 24 word seed phrase that I need to write down. The the read write um, permissions is very important. Um, obviously, you know, mini dApps we are producing, you can trust. 
but when third parties start to make mini dApps, maybe we can't trust them. Maybe they're going to be malicious and they're going to try and empty your wallet. So please do not give right permissions to any mini dApp that you are not 100% confident is legit and secure. Uh, this is yeah. a very important feature. Yeah. So here you'll see your seed phrase. Um, the seed itself. So this is the um, the hash of the phrase. I'm locked to or false. So I haven't locked my node yet. So it says false. The other way of doing this is actually directly through Docker using the terminal here. So I could also do vault. Um, and this doesn't use, because this isn't the Minidap system, there's no pending actions here. So I can just do, do it directly in the Docker terminal. So again, write down the seed phrase. Um, and if you want to encrypt your node, then you can do the command uh, vault action password lock one word and then password uh let's just use minimal work shop and then confirm minimal work shop there we go so that's now run the command to encrypt my keys it's important to remember to use the confirm command as well, because if you just use password, there's a chance that you've mistyped that password, and you'll hit return, the node will be locked with a password that you've incorrectly typed and don't know. So always get in the habit of using the confirm when setting that password. Yeah. And now if I do the vault command again, it doesn't show me my 24 words because they, they've been encrypted. So this is a safe way, um, just in case anybody gets access to your desktop or laptop, or you leave it on a train, then if your keys are encrypted, then no one can access the funds on your node. You can still receive funds, so people can still send to your wallet addresses, that's fine, and that will come through, but you just won't be able to send any funds from the node without first decrypting it. So um, to decrypt it, it's just vault action password unlock password minimal workshop. There we go. All private keys are stored. And now if I do vault, I can see the 24 words again. Um, if you need help with the commands, you can always do help command and then type in the commands that you need help with. So vault, and then this will show you, give you a bit of information about the command and what all of the actions are. So I used password lock and password unlock. Um, and then it will give you some examples as well. So there is actually another option here with the vault. You can completely wipe the keys from the node um to do that you will actually need to enter the seed that it's given you so so we use lock and un and unlock if you want to wipe the keys completely then you'd need to do vault action wipe keys seed and then i copy my seed from up here have you saved the seed phrase jazz to get it back I have. <laughs> okay, all private keys wiped. Again, I can't see the keys. And now the only way to restore the keys is by putting the seed phrase in. So we generally, you want to use your seed phrase as little as possible. You don't want to be typing your seed phrase all the time, um, which is why we prefer to just set up a secure password and use that um, to password lock rather than wipe, but this is an option. The ability to wipe the keys completely from the node is there to enable, uh, to enable you to have an online and offline setup. 
um, for more advanced security. We'll be doing a workshop on that at some later date, uh, but you're much better off just encrypting your keys at this stage and not reusing yeah. your seed phrase. And Leo, could you share the, the link to the docs in the chat, the secure funds? Uh, yep. So to restore the keys, I actually need to enter the whole seed phrase here. So vault action, restore keys phrase, and then double quote. I have to put in my whole seed phrase, which I've copy and pasted. There we go. All private keys restored. Okay, so that is um, seeing your seed phrase, encrypting it decrypting it and wiping it. Um, I'll now show you how to take a backup. So we can carry on here in the terminal. Um, again, you can do the same thing from your terminal in the mini DAP system if you prefer. I'll carry on here, I think it's a bit easier. So with backup, let's just have a look at the options. So help, command, backup. So you can just take a backup, put a password, or you can do backup auto true. So that will take a backup also true will take a backup every 24 hours automatically um, but it, it won't be password protected um, so if you do do that then definitely um, encrypt your uh, your keys first so backup let's just take one password and backup Password, confirm, backup, password. Okay, so this has created a backup and this is the name of the backup. In Docker, when you start the node, you specify which folder you're going to map to the Docker container. So Let's just show you again here. Uh, when I started it, I chose this minima docker 6001 folder and that's mapped to home minima data in the docker um, image. So I can actually see this backup if I go into my minima docker 6001 folder. Um, oh no, sorry, not six, it's eight. 8001, there we go. That's my backup there. Um, if you want to give your backup a name, you can do backup, file, give it a name. My backup, what's the date? 9th March 23. Back. And then password. If you don't want to put password, if you've encrypted your private keys and you think that's enough, you don't want to also have a backup, a password for your backup, then you can use the password blank and it will just create a non-password protected backup. There we go. So now if I want to restore this backup, then I need to make sure that the backup file I want to restore is in the right folder. So let's show you how I'm going to restore this node onto my other node. So let's see, minimum 6001. So this is a separate node. If I do vault here, you see I have a different seed phrase. And so if I, if I want to restore my minima 8001 to minima 6001, I need to make sure that the backup I want to restore is in the right folder. So I'm going to copy this one and put it into here. And then 
then I'm going to copy this name because I'll need that. And in the nodes I'm restoring to. can do, let's just do help, command, restore. That will give you some information about how to restore. So here in the example, I can see what the syntax is. So I'm going to do restore, file, just paste that there. Oh no, wrong one. File, let me forget this name. Password, does anyone remember what my password was? <laughs> Backup password. There we go. Oh, go it, it isn't easy for us to explain this to you, right? Um, everything we're explaining, we, we've decided to create workshops, Jas Jasmine and Barry and I, we decided to organize this because we understand that not enough people look at the docs. But all of this information is available on the docs and the video will also be available on YouTube. So if it's too complicated for you, then I invite you to look over it later on. Yeah. Step by step. Restart minima for restore to take effect. So I'm going to, oh, I should have, if I've checked in the logs, logs, I can see it's automatically restarted here and now it's syncing up. And then if I go to the terminal again, you can see the seed phrase has changed and it's the same seed phrase from my other node. Yeah. Okay, so that's how you do a backup and restore. Now, jumping back into the Minidap system. See if we're up yet. Uh, okay, so I'm logged in and I've already requested withdrawal to this node, but I can see the address that I submitted um, in the new wallet that we'll be releasing. Let me just, okay, I have that here. What I can do is I can just take this withdrawal address, paste it, go to the receive page here, paste it into the check and see that it belongs to this address. Mm. Okay, so here, I obviously have withdrawn to a different node. So I, when I copy this address and I put it into my wallet, it tells me that no, this address does not belong to this node, which is what you would expect because I just started this node up before this workshop. So that's correct here. And for you, as long as you've installed the wallet on the same node that you're, that you're withdrawing from, this will be yes. 